Okay. So does anybody have any thoughts about which book they would like to read together? The anthology Sorry. sounds interesting because um, I, I haven't read it yet either. So, mm -hmm. okay, the witch boy. I love short stories, so that would be really wonderful. Good. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, volumes that, of Doreen's that you're particularly keen on reading together? I leave, I leave, I would leave more space to our benefactors, of course. Um, but I'm, I, I will just say that whatever we're going to read for me will be extremely beneficial because <laughs> at the moment I'm, I'm studying the collection and, and my hope is to see within her books uh, connections with her writing. So I'm, I'm an archaeologist. I deal with material culture. And I want to um, connect the objects with the hidden, hidden histories, if, if it makes sense. Absolutely, yeah. And she left <laughs> so much, like this enormous wealth of material and written work, not just her published work, but also her notebooks and her, like all of those things are available for people mm -hmm. to read and to make connections with. And her biography is so fascinating. Um, so I think all of that will lend richness to our club. Can I, can I just say, um, before we started, I had this book by the side of me, so oh, well. <laughs> that's it. Then. Um, I don't know why, but obviously I do now, but I drew it again. <laughs> now you know. Yes. <laughs> well, if, if there's no objection, I would say we should start with that one. It's not long. Uh, mm -hmm. It will give us something to, to dig into. And there'll be lots to make connections with i think uh, not only in our own practices but also with her and her life so how does that sound yep yeah. all in favor yeah great yep yes hey we can assume it's a um it's accessible to everyone if you don't yet have a copy um then uh order one <laughs> and uh, and and is there anybody who needs us to wait a little bit for it to come through the mail I'll need to order a copy, and I'm wondering if I ordered it through the foundation, if it could be popped in the post quick. I think it, for quickness, it would be better through Amazon, although yeah. I, we all hate yeah. Amazon. But, but to be, <laughs> to be honest, that. though, Julie, to be honest, if something goes in the post from Great Britain to Canada, yeah. it gets here just as fast or faster than really? from the United States, definitely faster than the United States. Oh, and okay. just as fast or faster than ordering internally in Canada. And I'd rather support the foundation. Oh, okay, then. Oh. Yeah, we'll order it then. Um, Shop.dorivalienti.org. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mine came in five days and that was very fast. So I would say. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Thank um, you. For the was it from the... Was it from the foundation? It uh, was, Maggie? yeah. I did. Yeah, I'm going to do the just same. To, just in case I ordered it. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember posting it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Evelyn. Um, and, and as we read together, if you, um, if you have any other thoughts about what you might like to read next, we can have that conversation somewhere in the next couple of weeks mm -hmm. so that people can be prepared for the next book. Does that sound yeah. like a good plan? Yep. Has everyone else got a copy? Need yep. to order a copy myself as well. Who's saying that? Kim. Oh, Linda. Okay. I can't remember if I've got a copy. I've got most copies of her <laughs> stuff, but I can't remember if I've got one of that. I'll have a dig around and have a look. Yeah. If you okay. don't have one, to order one and then let us know if you don't get one quickly or if you can't find one locally, then yeah. we'll make sure we get you one. Yeah. Yeah. Link, do you have access to a copy of it? Yes, I oh. have uh, <laughs> several copies. Good, yeah. I Brilliant. was thinking I would like to order several myself, but I wanted to wait until we did this, so I didn't eat all of them. Yes, that would. Be... <laughs> oh, lovely. Okay. Yeah, they make really nice gifts. Yes. Hmm. Yes, that one does. Yeah. I bought all of the ones that you published from from Crowther, and and they have been going mm -hmm. out as gifts too everyone <laughs> excellent so good and so when i read uh fiction with friends 
especially in this particular context. Um, it's easy enough to split it up um, by chapter. So looking at this particular book, there are several short stories. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 11 in the book. So my thinking is if we wanted to meet twice and to discuss half and then the second half, does that sound like a good structure for people? Yes. Yeah. It would be about 40 pages each time. It's not a super long book. Right. 40 pages each time. Would people prefer to do it more spread out than that? Um, each uh, month, are you saying? We could do it every other, every other week or every month, um, but I think monthly seems like a-, a On the survey, most people said monthly. monthly. Yeah. Do that. yeah. So maybe a two month, we meet once, meet the second time we meet, we can do the last bit and then decide on the next book. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. And my thinking is that if we plan when we meet offline, so we don't do that right now, yeah. um, that would be easier. So people can check their calendars and think about it. Um, and so we'll send out a, an email and you can respond to that with the times that, mm -hmm. you, that sound good people. Yeah. Good. Yep. Yay. What would you like to get out of this book club other than to see inside her books and make a connection with her writing, as Marco said? Were there, was there anything else you were hoping to get out of it? Thanks, Dodie. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I'm really keen on book clubs generally, so it would be just great to, to see how a different one operates. Um, you know, the, I've got some preconceived notions in my head about these things uh, because I've just been doing it one way for so long. So I'd like to break that, maybe pick up some new things. And uh, I would and love actually, to hear your thoughts about how we could do it like you, because I'm curious how, I mean, I'm a librarian and I, I do sort of this sort of thing, but, um, but my, obviously my own preconceived notions about how it should be are also one way. So. Well, we've been meeting bi-weekly for, for years, right? And, and our group, um, our book club is sort of part of a, it's not really an outer court, but it's sort of an mm -hmm. outer circle of people that, that are frequently visiting our coven type idea. Yeah. And uh, we meet, and actually it worked out kind of well when the pandemic hit and we moved on to Zoom because we used to meet in person in my living room. And Zoom has made us, when we're gonna keep it on Zoom forever, I think, because it's allowed us to bring people into the book club that live far, far away. And people don't skip meetings because they don't have to put pants on or leave their house. You know, it's, it's pretty easy to just, you know, be well dressed from the neck up and, and participate uh, on online. Isn't and we so read out loud to each other. Uh, the, the mental pictures that conjures up. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, we meet on, you know, we read out loud to each other. So yes. uh, one of the spin-off uh, uh, things that I always say when we read out loud is that it, it really helps our vocabulary skills and our sight reading skills, and it helps us in ritual. And that's one thing that's uh, really interesting, especially, you know, we're in Canada, we have a different dialect than um the UK, any mm. part of the UK. So uh, when we're reading books, particularly books by somebody like Doreen, where we're reading in a dialect, a type of English that's different, it uh, it really helps with vocabulary, which in ritual is great. That you is know, a to great be able to point. sight read yeah. off a, a yeah. ritual script and to be able to uh, use words or hear words out loud that we only normally ever read in a book. Hmm. Right? I love there's, that. That's a great point. Well, there's a lot of words and terms in witchcraft writings that we don't use in our everyday language, right? I'm sure everybody's got one in their head right now just talking about this. <laughs> and for people, especially new people who are coming to our book club who may be interested in initiating and joining our coven, um, they're hearing these words spoken for the first time sometimes. And that's kind of yeah. exciting. And it, yep. It's a really good discussion point for everyone. So um i'm just throw some new words at me folks I'm, I'm that's one thing i'm i'm interested to hear too and and to hear uh different accents and people from different cultures use those words is is pretty yep. cool so mm -hmm. yeah and that was one of the things i was going to say is that a sense of fellowship across the globe it's very hard for me to 
meet my Australian and New Zealand brothers and sisters uh, in person, but we have mm. made a great connection. And, um, and now there's a, this worldwide Gardnerian connection and that I didn't have before. Yep. And I, I want to join your book club. Don't I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're in the middle of one right now. Um, where is it? We're reading, we're reading uh, the books we pick tend to be around some element of Wiccan practice that we can discuss with anybody. And we're reading yes. this transportation by, by Dana Paxson. And we've got, uh, we've got our token heathen in the group who's fascinated yep. with this book. And uh, I just saw her recently. She came to our local convention and, and did a, a ritual for us. That's so cool. Aha. Uh -huh. Hello, Mike. A nice connection. Well, welcome. You need to unmute, Mike. You're still muted. Unmute. That's it. Oh, no. Hi, so glad you could come to join us. We are kind of near the, the middle of our conversation. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, to not to put you on the spot in front of all of these other lovely people, but uh, we're glad you're here. That's it. Oh, sorry. Um, I was still looking at um, instructions without unmuting. Um, so I'm Michael Bray, and um, and I'm happy to be here. What can I say? <laughs> Where are you from? I'm up in Leeds. All, which is a collection of short stories for our first book. And that one is the most recently published. So you might not even have a copy, but um, do you think you can, you think you can lay your hands on one? Um, I shall see. I've got all, I've got all the others. I think I've got all the yeah. first ones up there somewhere. Of course we made it hard for everybody, but I, the, yeah. the foundation does have it. So you can, mm -hmm. I think if they're the only ones who has it. <laughs> there it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the foundation's got it and it should be available on Amazon as well. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Well, is there anybody else who has any thoughts about what they'd like to get out of this this uh, book club? I think this is a, a good number of things right now. Yeah, I I uh, felt I had felt like an interloper here for a moment until uh, Dodie mentioned the heathen in her book. <laughs> um, I, I because I'm a national interfaith officer for you know Scotland, um, and I have loads of friends who are Wiccans. And I've attended Wiccan and joint rituals, but I actually don't know that much. I, you know, it dawned on me when I did a, a ritual with Yvonne. It's like I don't know what we're doing, but okay, uh, it would have been good to know. <laughs> it would have been good good to know some of the terminology. Um, you know, I'm familiar with a lot, but. As with any path, there's there's just so much to learn, and I'm I'm also very much interested in learning more about Doreen. So you know, I, I like this idea of of taking the short stories. Um, I, you know, I like fiction very much and short stories. So you know, I and I'm just really thrilled to be you know to be able to do this. I think this is a wonderful idea, and what what I hope to get out of it is. The communication with other people um, that you know that, so that we can learn together and, in, and enjoy something um, rewarding yeah so anyway that's those are my thoughts thank you <laughs> thank you I'm always uh, amazed to hear people say they don't know that much you know like yeah you've been doing it for what you know a decade and you don't know that much I think that's uh, everybody you know so much and we're sharing it together and that that that's so meaningful to me that people are willing to be here and share what they know well Doreen herself yeah. said she was a student of witchcraft yep. yes mm -hmm. she never said she was a witch actually mm -hmm. we're always yes yes always a student yep. always a student yeah. <laughs> well if you've always are learning aren't you you yes. always come across something you didn't know or mm -hmm. hadn't heard of. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think the best way to learn something is to share it together and teach others. So together we are, we're all teachers in this group. So I don't feel yeah. there's no, <laughs> yeah. there's no need to worry about that. That's good. Yeah. 
So one um, one thing we could do is each person kind of uh, spearheads one story. It doesn't have to be everybody yeah. because we only have a, a handful of them. That's five stories for the next. Does anybody feel like they would like to sort of, I don't know, lead the discussion for any of those chapters? One, one thing that I could do is to model that for the next time and for me to lead all five of them. But if anybody wants to jump in and just try it, there's no reason why it has to be the same as the way I do it. Mm -hmm. The titles are evocative. We have uh, The Witch Ball, Vampire Love, The Cottage in Thorny Lane. Is that a place? The Talisman of the Moon, The Legend of the Grove, and A Night in Wookie Hole. Is that a place? <laughs> I feel like- yeah. that's a place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The geography, yes. Wonderful. So it's unless people yeah, feel think... strongly about it, I'm happy to do that, but to, to um, kind of lead conversation on each of those. But if anybody would like to leap in and say, I'd like to lead conversation on one of those stories. then I, uh, I won't commit until I have a copy of the book, which I just ordered. So valid. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say the same. I'm, I'm happy to volunteer for one, but I would like to have the book before. Yeah. <laughs> We that could say this, sense. Maggie, if I get my book in time, I'd like to lead the conversation about Wookiee Hole. Failing that, can you be my fallback? Yeah, I love Wookiee Hole, so I'm going to jump in there. Both <laughs> okay. I'm with you on that one. Very good choice. <laughs> well, I'm excited. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to lead a discussion on the story as well. Um, I just haven't got a copy of the book in front of me to be able to say which one yet. All right. Well, you got to. I've got, I've got a know. copy here. Just haven't got access to Somewhere. it. Somewhere. Why don't you do the legend of the grove? Me? Is that okay? Oh. Um, I suppose I, so. I, well, you can wait and pick, but then you won't. we won't know which one you want to choose. So that's why we maybe just figure it out now. Well, it, might be, look... it might be useful for us to send around an email yeah. With who's doing what or who's volunteered for what. Oh, right. We can definitely so, do that. Yeah. Uh, so um, Dodi said uh, Wookiee Hole, hole. <laughs> with both feet. And Emlyn said <laughs> that you would like to do one, but you don't know which one yet. So you'd like to see it. And yeah, I'll need, to I'll need to dig out a copy of the book from the bookcase. Is this the, the black dog is in here? Is the black anyway. dog is in the second part. Yeah. Yeah. All oh, right. So. Yeah. Uh, so it's a way ahead. Um, mm. And Marco, oh, you don't know this any tight any. Yes, yeah, so we got the book yet. No, we haven't got the book yet. <laughs> right. Some <laughs> some title. Yeah. I'm trying to go and, and order it now as well. Go uh, on. <laughs> We're gonna keep you busy, Emlyn. That's right. <laughs> Is that how it works? If we order a book from the foundation, it, it's Emmeline's broad shoulders that that responsibility falls on? It depends on how it seems, but usually I end up posting out books, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you may, you may find that um, there may be a little bit of a delay with things <laughs> like customs and so on now. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Um, we've actually had to get a, what's it, what's it called, Julie? An EORI number, isn't it? Um, yes. Because technically now, uh, we order the book, it arrives here, it gets sent out, and technically we're liable for VAT in the country it's going to in Europe, <laughs> mm. and also custom charges as well. So we're trying oh, various... Easy. We're trying various creative means to ensure that we're able to maintain our pricing. Yeah. Well, that is very kind of you. We, I think, are willing to pay whatever whatever needs to be paid in order to make it happen. Oh yeah, it's it's not that, Maggie. Each country has got a different rating of VAT, uh, and if we can avoid doing it, then it makes life an awful lot simpler. That is a good point. Wow, yikes. Not bad. Mm. So one of the things that I would advise as you're reading, instead of reading for pleasure, which was something that many of us do sort of on a, on a regular basis, read with an intent in mind. And the, the goals that we've written down, our goals is that we want to see the things that she 
you know, see, see what do we see of Valiente in her writing, in, in her fiction? What does that teach us about her? Um, and how does that relate to the ways in which we might, uh, as, as witches or as practitioners, do ritual? Um, and how does this give us a deeper connection to our own selves as witches, as you read, or, or practitioners of other kinds? Um, I am always interested to hear people's reflections on that. You might not choose to share them, but I think that's a, a benefit to you as you read. I also think um, the craft and paganism in general derives a lot of its inspiration from written works and from art and from other people's creative works. So as you're reading, when you go to a museum, for example, or when you read a poet, book of poetry, um, you might be inspired to create a piece of ritual or to do a devotional. Um, so I think looking at modern and contemporary forms of inspiration are just as important. Like when I listen to music on the radio or something like that, I get inspired by that just as I do here. Um, so think about how you might then use that in your own work, how to use the things that you learn from Doreen in her fiction and her, in her nonfiction and, and maybe in her poetry, if we get to that. And um, I think that will, that will grow us all. We are coming to the end of our, of our time here together. Is there anything else that somebody would like to, to share or, or ask while we're here? Mike, you were going to ask something. Oh, can you hear me? I didn't have my voice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to buy the book because I've just bought too many books this month already. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was my limit, I think. Understood. I bought Stella Di Diamonium. Um, I've just Roman, Etruscan uh, Roman remains. Um, I'm sure you, you've all heard of these. Yeah. And what's this one from Hayden Press in the email, waiting for, waiting for some of these to come. Um, Goetic Evocation, and I've got a Radia uh, Gospel of the Witches, which just arrived. So a bit of a stack going to, to, to read at the moment. And money well spent, right. I think. Yes, mm. oh, definitely. Definitely. All right then. Well, it's very nice to meet all of you and to get a chance to see you in Zoom person. I look forward to <laughs> hearing your reflections on the reading that we do and look in your email box for uh, an invitation to share your schedule so we can find a time for our next Zoom meeting. Yep. Thank you very much. Oh, there was one question, Maggie. Um, yes. you, you, which system do we use for uh, sharing um, files and um, discussions and things? You the way team. in which I've done it before, yeah, we, we have, we, we have, you and I had this conversation. Yes, on, and I can't remember the name of the system. We could have an offline conversation between meetings, and that is something that we don't have to have, but we could. Um, and I think to avoid things like Facebook, which involve you sharing lots of information with other people, um, yeah. we've mostly chosen to do it off off of uh, social media and use something that's more self-contained. What's that called then? Are you asking about the one that I've used in the past? The yes. Slack. Snack. Slack. Slack. Yeah. Slack. That's, that's just the one platform we could use. I think with a small group like this, we could just as well stick with an email group. Yes, uh, that's totally fine. People feel comfortable with that. Yes, yeah, Slack, I found a bit confusing. But... It's somewhat daunting unless you want to have a long term relationship with that. Uh, yeah. In my book clubs, we were making teaching materials. So for each book that we oh. read, each mm. person created um, something that could be shared with, uh, with students later on. So we have those products yeah. to be shared. Yeah. But I don't think that's the intent here. So. No, I don't oh. think so. So emails. Think... I wonder I if Google Marco. Drive. Yeah. We could definitely use Google Drive. It doesn't really yeah. provide a place for conversation unless we want to do like uh, side notes or something like that. That would be a way to share and, well, and a very easy gonna, way to share files for sure. If we're going to do an email group, is everybody happy for everybody else to know each other's emails? Thinking yeah. Yeah. privacy, yeah. data mm -hmm. privacy. Yes. Yeah. We'll, 
trust each other. I'm not going to start spamming you or anything. <laughs> yes, yeah, fine with me. Yes, yeah, okay with me. It's yes. easy enough to make your own a new email for this if you're if you're concerned about that. So I think that's yes. a free oh, yeah, that and easy way. A way to do it mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Well, we'll carry on with emails then until we grow into a massive <laughs> thing. <laughs> yes, we definitely could shift to a different platform in the future, but that would require yes. some some a level of of learning and investing. So yes, okay. I think it'd be useful to clarify. We're talking about meetings, as in Zoom meetings, I'm assuming, for monthly meetings. Yes. So the emails are to do what? Well, there could be a, a way just to use email to plan those meetings, but it sounds like it would be beneficial for folks to have an opportunity to talk in between meetings or to discuss what was said at those meetings. And so we could have an email thread about where we could extend our conversation or for people who can't make it, can participate. Yeah. Does that okay. sound like what you had in mind? Yeah, that's why I, I was just clarifying. That was my assumption. I wanted to clarify yeah. it to make sure that we were all thinking on them along the same lines. Good, good. I think that would be it. Would be good to have a place to talk off of this place, uh, this Zoom place. So if people have a <laughs> trouble with their connection or for whatever reason can't make it that's it's true open. yes mm -hmm. yeah access okay <laughs> wonderful mm. all right well i don't have anything else for you all today is there anything else people want to talk about no nope i'm fine here fabulous yeah. so just watch your email box for that conversation thread and also for a, a scheduling thread for our next meeting right does this, sort of time, does this sort of time sort of work for people if we if we chose to do this again at this time? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think I think Sunday afternoons about this time are probably quite a good time for most people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sunday mornings are good here, but Same. no earlier, please, because that's just. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, having a default time is good, and then if we need to reschedule, we can. Yeah. Okay. All right. All I didn't right. want to all right. Okay. Well, I hope you all get your books. And um, yes. you know, it comes to that, even if you can't get your book, come anyway, and you can still participate. It's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, and we do have fine. folks who want to do a, a little brief summary. And, and yeah. Know. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank very you much. for setting Thanks all for enabling another book. Thank purchase. you all. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, very much. <laughs> we'll talk more. You. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> I'll be here for a little bit longer if anybody has more questions. <laughs> yes. It's just nice to meet you, Maggie. It's nice to meet you, Dodie. Maybe sometime <laughs> we can meet in person. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday, some crazy day when there's no border restrictions. And good to see right. you, Julie and Emlyn, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to see you as well. Yeah. well and, and my sister is Canadian, so uh, I, I spend a lot of time in Canada. Okay. So you're in Michigan. I am. She lives in Edmonton, so it's a bit of a haul, but. Uh, yeah, when I drive to Southern Ontario, it, it's much more, um, well, it's a couple hours quicker to drive through Michigan, but with the border being blockaded right now, I don't right. think that'll be happening anytime oh, soon. Oh, heck no. Yeah. <laughs> but consider yourself invited. If you ever come through Michigan, we have a, a guest room and you can come and stay with us. And oh, that's lovely.